days and good to see good to see these guys packing up their stuff and getting a chance to go home and see their family so uh, I thought it'd be good that we have a, a one last wrap it up type deal so hopefully uh, I can you know help you with anything you need and then uh, then you're not gonna see or hear for me for a little while which I'm sure breaks your hearts okay I open it up I'll start this uh, we take our first Tom. question from Tom Canavan. Are you uh, in for a well-deserved rest? Well, I'm gonna. I'm certainly gonna get with my family here over the holidays and, and look forward to that. And, you know, I actually got a good night's sleep uh, one of these nights this weekend. That was good, and uh, I'm looking forward to just like I said, spending time with my family and. You know, one thing that never stops is recruiting, so that'll that'll continue uh, every day. But other than that, I'm going to get away from it for a little bit. This question from Keith Sargent, NJ.com. Greg, I had two parts. Uh, one, uh, um, you, you uh, go into 2021 with uh, the Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Year, and you have the Big 10 reigning uh, special uh, return specialist of the year. Um, are you hoping that there's two footballs uh, on kickoff? How do you plan to u utilize them both? And then the second part is more of a big picture on chop for change. Um, where do you see that evolving in 2021? Well, I am excited about uh, overall the skill that we have, on, we, we are going to have on our team. Um, and you mentioned some of it. Um, I think, you know, we've shown that there's ways – with one football, the two guys can carry it on the same play, right? So we'll, we'll continue to we'll continue to work that, and we have fun with that. I think as a program, we look forward to coming up with some creative ways uh, to 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 use those talents on special teams. And as you know, we're we're passionate about special teams in our program. So um, yeah, we'll we'll figure out some ways. And then chop for change. Uh, I'm I'm really excited about where where we're headed with that. Our guys did an incredible job. Um, we did the coat drive. Not sure if that was publicized or not, but um, uh, you know, everybody in the program stepped up, and and uh, that makes me proud that, that they all um, contributed. And I think to be able to do what we did um, and help help those people out is is certainly a great thing. But we have a lot of ideas, things that our players would like to do, things that I'd like to do, things that our committee would like to do. And uh, we're just going to keep chopping one at a time and, and uh, do those things. And as I said to our guys, I said, you know, this is going to be an ongoing thing in our program. So, uh, you know, it's not a deadline that we have to have it done by this time. Let's just keep moving forward with consistent planning and consistent execution of whatever we believe helps people the most. And I think it's a good, uh, it's certainly great um, to do all the things we're doing to help others, to really get behind uh, social justice. And I think it's great for our players to learn how to do that in a, in a very organized and productive manner. So um, it's all wins when it comes to that. Chris Eisman, Gannett. Hey, Greg, I just wanted to ask you about uh, two players. Um, what does it mean for you to get Fadakasi back for next season and have exit up for your defense? And then also, what does it mean for you to now see, you know, Brent and White go to the NFL? And obviously, you guys are close going back to the Ohio State days. So what does that mean for you? Well, yeah, it was a, um, certainly very pleased that 03 has uh, decided to return next year. Um, you know, I thought he really had a tremendous season. And as I've said to you guys many times, he established a work ethic that I think the rest of our football team can aspire to. Um, and to have him coming back again, um, you know, as a returning captain, I think that's really says a lot. I think that, uh, you know, we're going to do things to help him improve as much as we can and take his game to another level, which would really be great for our program and certainly great for him. Uh, when it, with Brendan White, I'm excited for him. Uh, I know this is a dream of his, and uh, you know he, he is going to attack it with the same way I've seen him attack everything in his career. And um, you know we'll be here to support him. He'll be back for pro days and things, but uh, I know where he's training and all that stuff. So he and I stay in touch, and uh, we'll keep keep pushing him along and, and 
help him get to where his, you know, what his goals are. Hey, Darren, 24 seven. Greg, were the exit interviews a little different with those guys because of everything that's going on, the extra year of eligibility and, you know, the uncertainty with COVID? Well, certainly it's a different, a, a different deal when all of a sudden uh, the NCAA says, well, everybody has another year. So it does change the dynamic a little bit. Um, and everybody's at a different place, Bobby, you know, like sometimes we, uh, we all, even including myself, we try to put them in this box of, you know, you're, you're, you're a senior or a junior, everybody's got different life situations, just like we all do. And I think all those things come into play. And the thing that pleased me in, in our interviews, exit interviews, the ones I did, the ones our assistant coaches did is that our players trust us, uh, have grown to trust us in the year we've been together to, you know, kind of rip it open and share what they're thinking. And, you know, what we do is we just give it to them straight. I, I said to you, um, I think I said this the other night, you know, I try to, I try to give them the advice that I'd give my own sons. And I learned uh, a long time ago that, you know, sometimes what's best for the program isn't best for the individual and vice versa. So what I try to do is approach it as like, I'm talking to my sons and give them the advice that I would give them. And that's, that's been pretty good to me in the last 10 or 15 years. So that's how we approach it. And that's how I ask our coaches to approach it. Scratch, NJ.com. Greg, also a two-parter for me. One, do you feel comfortable with the quarterback room and the personnel as is to go into next season without making an addition, obviously be out of the transfer portal? And schedule-wise, has the Big Ten told you anything about what they might do to change the schedule? And do you still intend to go to Syracuse and fulfill the second half of that contract? Um. The second part of your question with all the scheduling stuff, I have not heard a thing from the Big Ten. Uh, and, you know, right now scheduling is something that I that I need to get with, with Pat and with Kevin Mack, and we just got to sit down and work through everything. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. So we'll wait for the Big Ten first, and then, and then, uh, and then we'll deal with that. But, you know, there's contracts involved and everything else, so I, it's not like I have a lot of say in it. Those things were done a long time ago. So whoever it is, I just want to make sure we know who and when so we can start our preparation when we get back. Because that is, a you know, the entire offseason, you're planning all that stuff. Um, after that long answer, I forget your first question. Uh, the quarterback room, are you okay with the uh, guys you have? Or? I got it. I got it, yeah. Um, you know, one thing at every position, we're constantly evaluating if there's opportunity to get better, if there's opportunity that gives us depth. So, we, you know, I'll never – box ourselves in that we're going to or not going to do something. We're constantly evaluating every position. And um, that's not sidestepping your question. It's just the reality. There are quarterbacks in the portal. There's almost darn near every position. I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this all plays out with the portal. There's a lot of guys going into that portal. And I don't know where they're all headed. You know, uh, uh, the opportunities. I hope there's enough opportunities for all the guys that are in the portal. I worry that there's going to be guys that all of a sudden look around and they've lost the opportunity they had at their current institution. And there's not one that's a comparable and now they're stuck and they have to either go to a different level. So I think that's a, that's a big, big thing that has to be considered by the leadership of college athletics, uh, especially with the addition of that. Everybody got another year of eligibility. I think we kind of got ahead of ourselves, which is fine. But then I think we need to make sure we catch up in college football. Uh, otherwise, there's going to be a lot of people with nowhere to go. Hey, Politi, NJ.com. Greg, I got a big picture question for you. If I had told you in September that this would have been the outcome of this season, that you'd play all nine games, you'd win three of them, you'd be competitive, I mean, would you have said that you'd be ahead of your own schedule for, for this team? You know, I probably didn't have a schedule just because as crazy as things went. So usually what happens is you think you know a little bit about what you have, right? Um, and before I took the job, I really didn't know that much. I know a little bit. Then you get around the guys, but then it gets cut off in mid-March and you don't see them again till June. So there's really, you know, you take the schedule, and you, if there is one, and you throw it out the window. Um, I think this season, you know, we won three, we lost six. 
there's people who want to say, oh, we could have been six and three, you know, but we also could have been one and eight or oh and nine. I mean, those were all close games. You won some, you lost some. There was the Ohio State game that wasn't as close, right? And, uh, you know, the Penn State game that wasn't quite as close. So I, I don't know. I, I kind of think that plus or minus one or two, we probably ended up where we where we are. I think our coaches and our players did a, a really good job of trying to maximize what we could do in with the limited time, you know, with the no spring practice, no summer practice. Um, so am I pleased? No, I'm never pleased. But is it about, you know, after I got to know our team, is it about where we probably belong? Eh, I guess. I don't know. You know, it's hard to say that. Um, I always think we could have done this better, this better, this better, and won every game. But <laughs> that's a coach's look, and that's, you know, sometimes that's not realistic either. So um, what I am certain of is I am really encouraged because what we did do is we established our culture. We established how hard it is to do what we want to do. And you may say, well, they knew that. I'm not sure everybody knew that. I'm not sure that everybody really dealt in, this is reality. This is really, really hard. And we really, really worked incredibly hard and incredibly focused. And we ended up, we won three games. So the, the, the mountain we're climbing or whatever you want to call it, the tree we're chopping, it's hard. And it's going to take a intense focus and a lot of hard work to get to where our vision to get where we want to be. So I think everybody knows that now they understand how we do our business. And now it's a matter of taking a break and then getting back to work and understanding it is a year round effort to get to, to get to go play those games and win them. Hide right with rivals. Coach, last week you guys signed, uh, I believe it was 23 athletes, and then a couple days later you added one more from uh, Temple and Efine Maije, I think I pronounced that correct. Um, can you just talk about him a little bit and what uh, stood out to him that made you want to go after him? Well, I think he's a productive college defensive tackle in the American Conference. He's been very productive. And when you watch his video, um, you get excited about what he can do in our scheme. I think he's a good fit for our scheme. So I think we're very fortunate uh, to have him uh, become a member of our team and I can't wait to get, get to work with him here in, in, uh, when we get back in January. Going to go to Mike Pavlishko. Hey, hey, Coach. Uh, two questions for you. Number one, knowing all of, the, all of the infrastructure that you have here now that you didn't have before, does that allow a little more time for you in the offseason to um, – to kind of just recharge. Um, and the second question is, I'm, I'm hearing, you mentioned transfer portal and opportunities. Hearing at a lot of smaller schools, not at, in the Big Ten, not in the Power Five, that there are some opportunities out there that uh, nobody knows what's going to be because there are a lot of kids deciding whether to come back and whether those smaller schools can afford. Are you hearing that? I mean, I'm sure you talk to other coaches and hear other things around in terms of recruiting. Well, I, I am hearing that but I don't spend a lot of time talking to people during the season. So I, I that would be uh, not as accurate as just do the math. That That's how I look at it. I look at the facts, right? There's a, there's an entire group of young men that have been given another year of eligibility. So this year, these seniors, the guys with one year of eligibility remaining, they are not going to count on our scholarship total in 2021 season. But after that, there's been nothing, to, at least I'm not aware of, anything done that um, makes any accommodations. Well, you have this whole class of people that will have another year of eligibility. Well, you do the math. You're allowed 85 total. Something's got to give. So um, I do think that it's an issue right now, having places for guys to land. I think it'll be a much bigger issue a year from now when there is no accommodation for the for the extra year of eligibility. But it's, it's, it, it has the makings to be a real, let's call it interesting situation. We'll leave it at that. And then the other part was just about getting some time for uh, recharging with all the infrastructure, less things maybe to deal with. Um, around. And not my nature, but I've worked hard to be able to learn how to do that. So like this time coming up, I'm going to make sure that I do it because I'm, you know, 
I want to make sure that I get to do this for a lot of years. And if I don't take care of myself, I won't. So uh, I'm looking forward to actually getting a workout in and stuff like that, which, uh, you know, certainly can't hurt. Right. But uh, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done in our own program. There's a lot of work to be done recruiting, a lot of work to be done with facilities and things that will work. So there's a ton to be done. But uh, again, just do as much as you can each day and then go to bed and try to get it right the next day. And that's that's kind of how I approach it now. Maybe when I was younger, I tried to get it all done in one day, and that doesn't work. Chuck Mulrannan, Press of Atlantic City. Hey, Coach. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm going off an earlier question about um, if you're looking back to September, but I want to ask something else. That, you know, you won't even, the Big Ten wasn't even supposed to have a season. It was postponed. Then they, you know, announced in September. You guys only had a month to repair. Um, you being a new coach with a new staff, I mean, how happy are you with the turnaround in year one, considering where Rutgers was at the end of last season to now? I mean, considering with all the circumstances surrounding, not just you, but, I mean, any college team or any professional, whatever team, I mean, how happy are you with this turnaround? You know, Patrick, what I'm pleased with is the way that our guys worked. You know, I, I try not to even compare to what was, you know, that's not really where my mindset, my mindset is, okay, after I got to know our players, then how much did we improve from that point forward? And it's not necessarily improve at catching or throwing or blocking and tackling, but how much did we improve at handling our business, doing it the right way, trying to be able to be focused on what we're doing right now? One of the, one of the toughest things, I think, for young people right now is those two tough things, right? The past and the future. You know, they, they, they have so much where they're living in either the past or the future, and it's stealing from the present. And we really, really worked hard to get our guys to learn how to stay in the present. You know, we call it chop the moment. Don't worry about what happened before, and don't worry about the results, what's going to come. Can you chop the moment right now? And what I think our guys are learning is the more we can do that during the week and the more we can do that on game day, the better the result. And when we don't do that, the results take a, a turn for the, for the worse. So that's a skill like any other skill. And that's what I'm most excited about is our guys now understand that. And they've, they've had some success in doing that. And we just have to keep building on that. And that's what we'll do when we get back. Um, you know, each phase of what we do in our program is very, very detailed. So when they start back with coach Butler, you know, we will have a team meeting, and we will go over exactly from this date to this date. These are our goals. This is what we have to get done. And now let's go do it. So, um, and it'll be good. Hopefully, you know, God willing, we can get into kind of a little bit of a routine now, which we certainly didn't have this year. A few more questions, Coach. We're going to go to Anthony Fusilli, Workers Radio Network. Hey, Greg, how you doing? You, good you and your staff and your players have come a long way in a short time. I just wondering if there's a message to the fans about the future, and also, you know, they were kind of not there to touch you and, and, and tell you things in front and to get back to that experience. Great question, Fooch. I, I can't wait. I hope, like heck, we get to have fans next year um, because I miss that. I know our players miss that. And I miss it on the road, too. I love taking a team into an opposing stadium and everybody's against you and, you know, the, the, the electronic sound systems just didn't do that justice, right? And um, we play in some great venues in our league, some great fan bases that when we go on the road. So between that and then what I think is just I love, as you know, I love our fans, and I hope that they're excited as I am because uh, I think our future is really bright and can't wait when they pack, you know, SHI Stadium and we run out of that tunnel. It'll be a, a year delayed. But I, I really, I, I look forward to that day. Take two more questions. Chris Normalski with Rivals. Hey, Coach. Uh, you know, the offense was was the last couple of seasons. Um, uh, obviously, they made a lot of strides, uh, strides this season. Uh, I just want to get your take on, on, how, on how that side of the ball performed this season. Well, uh, I think that um, Coach Gleason and the rest of the offensive staff, they did a great job of evaluating exactly what, 
what our talents were and then how can we utilize those talents. And I think that's what good coaches do. They, they don't necessarily say this is our scheme. They say within our scheme, your scheme needs to be broad enough that you can say, okay, this is where we have to focus because this is what we're capable of doing. And then what you do is you go out and you recruit to try to get to, or you develop what's already in your program to try to get to what you'd maximally like to do, you know? And, um, I think that they, they did a good job. I know those guys, uh, you know, after spending a whole season with them, there's so many things they wish they could get another shot at, right? Oh, we could have done this. We could have done that, but that's part of learning. That's part of growing. And that's what we'll do when we get back, you know, and a lot of guys, you know, they can't help themselves. They'll be working on it during their time off. But when we get back together, we decipher everything we did before we go look at what we want to do, you know, figure out exactly, you know, during the season, you do it after each game, but you're in a rush to get to the next one. Uh, when you get into the off season, they have something called cut ups where all the same plays go on one video and you watch it versus multiple opponents, those same plays and you decipher, you know, what we did well, what we didn't do well. So, um, I look forward to being able to do that with both offense, defense, and special teams. But, uh, you know, overall, I think we made strides as the season went on. We kind of learned about who we were. And uh, I think that information will be valuable going forward. Take our final question from Keith Sargent. Greg, what are your thoughts on spring practice? Um, since your season went three weeks longer, do you have to push that back? Do you give us some time off? And then I guess uh, we haven't gotten an update on Jim Panagos. How is he doing? And uh, you expect him back? Well, first, you know, God willing that we can have spring practice. I don't think we have to do anything because, you know, it's like it's a little more than bowl prep, but it's what we were used to, you know, at least the last six years is you go through bowl prep, you go play your bowl game, and then you go through spring practice. So I think we, you know, I've already put together a calendar um, that we're set to go on as long as, uh, as long as we are allowed to do that. But, you know, one, if, if 2020 taught us one thing is that you have to be ready to pivot, right? You have to be able to move on a dime because who knows what's going to be the case. Uh, forget two months from now, two weeks from now. So we are, we have a schedule, but we're ready to adjust it. Um, academically, you know, we have to, you know, again, their world changed. Like a lot of people forgot these college students, their world changed. They're not sitting in classrooms with people. They're sitting like we are right now, you know, do we get back to that eventually? Uh, I guess we're going to eventually, but when is that eventually? Uh, I was really pleased with the way the kids, our team went after it academically. You know, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned to you guys, uh, Saturday nights or Friday nights, a little bit of a blur to me, but I mean, checking kids in before the game. I mean, there's a quarter of our team is doing finals or doing papers, um, they really did grind and, and do what they had to do. And I'm anxious to see our results. You know, we start to get grades back in as, you know, in real time here. But uh, they certainly, it wasn't easy. So I think there's so much that's changed. And then as we slowly return to what we, you know, what we're used to, I don't know when that's going to happen, Keith. So we'll see. Uh, as far as Jim goes, Jim Jim's doing well. I actually... Uh, he was in our office today, and he's he's walking around with a limp, but he's walking. And uh, I look forward to, after the break, him starting back up full-time. And I know he's looking forward to it. He's been, like, a, you know, dying to get at it. So uh, that'll be, a, that'll be a, a good boost to, to the guys and to the staff and ultimately to all the D linemen. They, I do want to recognize that, uh, you know, I was really, really proud of the job that uh, Charlie Noonan and Jamal Westerman did with our, you know, Charlie became the interim D line coach and did an unbelievable job. And, and uh, Jamal Westerman stepped up as a GA. He was the GA, but he stepped up and took on added responsibility. And uh, you know, that's what families do, right? When, when something happens, everybody steps up and, and does a little bit more. And, uh, and I think it's a good lesson for our team. You know, they were able to witness that, you know, there wasn't any panic. Everybody, kind of just adjusted and helped each other out. And our D line did a good job because, you know, that's not who they were used to up until that point as their coach. And now they're, you know, they were working with them, but that wasn't their coach. And uh, I think the D line did a good job. Um, you know, Mike Dwumfor, who was an older guy, did a good job of, of just leading guys. Uh, Julius Turner, you know, guys that had been around a little bit, did a nice job of 
helping helping uh, with the transition. But it will be good to get Jim back. So appreciate you asking. Well, I uh, I guess that's it, huh, Haas? We're good. So I do. I wanna I wanna thank you guys again, as I did the other night, for covering us. I, I don't take it for granted. I think it's it's certainly part of growing our program. So I appreciate that. And I hope you guys can have a great holiday and get a little time away as well. And uh, look forward to seeing when we get back. All right. So happy holidays, guys. Thanks, Coach.